Coaches, 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 welcome to the podcast. And I'm getting ready to fly up as I'm recording this in a couple of days to Michigan. Uh, we have some different basketball clinics. We'll run one on the east side of the state, and then we'll run another one on the west side of the state. But one of the reasons I'm flying up and doing those clinics this weekend is because I'm speaking at a coaches clinic, the Hoop Smart Coaches Clinic, Charlevoix, Michigan, with uh, Ken George Basketball. Coach Shoshak, who's a Coach's Edge member, is the host of the clinic. And I'm speaking twice at this clinic. One, one time is an on court where we talk about uh, how we can handle ball pressure and attack ball pressure. And then I have a classroom presentation on in season player development. And everybody's going to get some handouts. And I want to share with you one of my handouts because I mean, this is part of the podcast, it's part of our YouTube channel. Like, you know, teaching, sharing, learning the game from one another. And so I want to show you one of the handouts one of the many handouts that the coaches who attend this clinic will get access to right here. And again, you're listening on the podcast probably, uh, but I want to show some love to our YouTube subscribers and uh, this is going to be audio anyway. So as you're thinking about in-season player development, it's not so much to me what we should be doing as far as what questions we should be asking. And I think that's the sign, like as I've continued in, in player development and working with different basketball programs as far as consulting, I mean, there's 70 plus programs around the country that I get the chance to consult with, whether that's in person, whether that's online, a lot of times it's both. And that number continues to grow, which is pretty awesome. And for me, it's a lot of asking questions and observation than me coming in and saying, hey, you need to do this right? Or here's how I do things, right? Learning about our program. And the more we can do that uh, as head coaches, I think the better off we're going to be. So when it comes to in-season player development, well, there's a lot of ways that we can develop ourselves as basketball players. There's a lot of ways we can try to develop players that fit into our system. But what is that system? And so it starts very simply with that. What are your pillars of play? which means what are the, the strengths and weaknesses that you have within your program and how can you play to those strengths so that you can be successful as a team? Are those aspects reflected in your practice? Do you always have a why? You can't get the most out of your time if you are really simply doing something just because you like it. There has to be more purpose behind it or just because the kids like it. I mean, the, I think of the, I forget what, it's, US, UCLA drill. There's different names for, for the drill where it's like a continuous up and down three on two. And listen, that's fine if it complements your style of play. But if it doesn't complement your style of play, even though it's fun, probably shouldn't do that, that drill. Another reminder, be great at what happens a lot, right? You can't have too much dip on the chip. You know what I mean? You can't have too much sauce right? It gets, it gets everything soggy, right? So as you think about what's cool, and I don't mean that just from player development, right? We, as coaches, we can pick on the kids from having social media and going on Instagram and seeing a bunch of cool moves. We do it to ourselves as coaches as well. What's the latest offense that teams are running? What's the cool, you know, new defense? And then we try to do that. No, that's a mistake, Right. We need to look inward while still, of course, having a very much a mindset of a student, but looking inward and asking ourselves, what are the needs that our program has? What skills do we need them to have and continuing to, to focus, focus on them? You know, as we talk about in-season player development and practice planning in general, which I love talking about, we had you know, three Zoom meetings recently on practice planning with our Coaches Edge coach members, teaching, training, and competing. How are we mixing that in throughout the course of a practice? And then does each practice have more of a theme? Hey, this is going to be more of a teaching workout. This is going to be more of a training workout. Hey, we're really going to compete and get after it. We want to play a lot. What are those things that we're going to emphasize each practice and throughout the course of the season? Now, when it comes to in-season player development, the amount of time that we practice is really, really important. We did a coaches poll, and most of our coaches this season will practice for two hours to start the year. 
And usually by the end of the season, they're shortening their practice time to an hour and a half to an hour and 40, 45 minutes. This is an overwhelming amount of our coaches. I have no problem with this. What are you cutting out? What are you cutting out? My point is, don't expect your players to become better at shooting, better at ball handling, whatever the needs are, finishing with whatever you really want them to perform better at throughout the course of the year if you're not practicing it. So if you're cutting your practice short by 30 minutes and you look at those lesson plans and you realize that 20 out of those 30 minutes that you cut was time that you'd spent previously on skill development, they're probably not going to have a whole lot of improved skills because we've all been to basketball practices where you're there for an hour and a half, you're there for two hours. And by the time you do a little warm up, you, you do a couple basic drills, you get into your offense, you get into the scouting report, and then you go up and down a little bit, an hour and a half and two hours has gone by. And you're saying to yourself, maybe I've taken 20, 20 shots. How many times have I actually worked on, you know, breaking somebody down and finishing in traffic? Not many. So it's very easy for us to do because there's so many different components that we could fill our practices up with. So we have to make sure if we're talking in-season player development that our, we're spending the amount of time that our players need to develop their skills. If we can make sure we're spending the right amount of time with making sure that we're picky with the drills that we use. We're efficient with the drills. There's not a whole lot of wasted time with those things. And we're, we got a really good foundation. So as you look on the right side, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, like comment, let me know what you, what you think about this. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Drill ideas. If we're thinking about player development, I'm not talking about the one on own. We'll talk a little bit about the drill types in a second. I'm talking about anything that is focused on improving the player's individual skills. And not just from a scoring aspect, but related to one another, right? So that could evolve you know, small sided games, two on two, two on one, three on three, three on two, whatever those things might be. But make sure you're picking the player development drills that complement your style of play. I think this is huge, right? If you're a team that plays a lot of half court basketball, it would be really important for you to do individual player development and group player development drills that work on closeouts, for example, because you probably get a lot of those closeouts. If you're a team that plays up and down fast paced, you're getting quick shots within your offense. You probably wouldn't spend a larger bulk of your player development time working on attacking closeouts. You'd spend the bulk of your player development time thinking about transition, kicking the basketball ahead, right? One dribble, two dribbles down, closing the gap on that defender who's around the three-point line and getting them to kids to understand that, hey, if, if if the person in the back line isn't there yet or they're still looking for their matchup, all you really have to do is get by that first line of defense because the back line's not ready yet and we can get some some easy buckets or the rotation is going to be late. So then we can work on that that dump off to the weak side block or the, the weak side three, corner three. We can get some shots up there. And so you're working on those types of transition drills that complement the fact that you guys play fast. That's your style of play, right? If you're a team that really rebounds, like that's a big thing. And I, I just, I always talk about my high school team, how we were a really big team. We had a lot of size. We weren't the quickest team, but we had a lot of size. So we were a great rebounding team. So if you want to emphasize rebounding, how can you make, rebounding part of your player development, right? It could be as simple as a one-on-one, -on -one, a two-on-two, -two, a three-on-three -three, uh, game that you want to play, except it starts with a rebound. Shot goes up, hit and get, playing the ball. Maybe it's outlet. Maybe it's going back up into your finish. Maybe it's uh, you get the rebound and we're working on passing to our teammates, but there's no dribble allowed. 
different types of things where we're emphasizing rebounding because that's a, a strength and something we want to play to while still putting um, it's not solely rebounding that we're doing. It's not that kid gets the rebound. Okay. Drills over. Let's just begun. Right. But we've emphasized rebounding within that. Right. If you got a team that runs, you know, more flex or any type of defense or offense, I should say, where you get the basketball a lot to the post, post moves, post one on one, high post, two on one, two on two, decision making, working on high low. Right. If, you, if you're a team that has those things, let that be a big part of your player development. And as a team, and you see the note on, on this graphic is, you know, all these things. You know, if we're working on closeouts, transition, help side, 50-50 balls, rebounding, they can all have a, a defensive component to it, right? It doesn't have to just be an offensive emphasis, even though it's in-season player development. Drill types. Depend on what coaches you talk to, and, I, and I'm always tweaking kind of how I, you know, characterize these drills. So, I, you know, I'm very much a work in progress as far as different types of drills. But if you think about how players are going to get repetitions throughout the course of a practice, here's something to think about. Block practice, it's a, it's usually high repetition. It's the same skill. There's no real changes to it. You just keep doing it again and again and again. Those are block reps. Now we can do block reps, uh, but if they're multi-skilled, there's slight variability there, right? There's no decision. So a multi-skill drill could be um, a, a series of things that you want them to practice. Let's take two, right? If a kid's at the three-point line and you want them to work on a crossover, they're working on the crossover. But they're going to drive and you want them to work on a specific finish, that's a multi-skill drill. They're not just working on the finish. They're not just working on the crossover. They're working on both. That's a multi-skill drill, right? You get, you get it and they go to the other side. So that'd be a, a very simple example of a one-on-one -on -one or even one-on-one. -on -one type situation right there variable practice there's rep differentiation that could vary minimally or it could have great variability to it right uh, it could be as something as simple as hey i'm going to shoot a 15 footer then i'm going to step in and shoot a 13 footer then i'm going to step back and shoot a 17 footer why are we doing that i think that there's some benefit from a shooting standpoint on kids being able to really like lock in on the right distance and how much power that they need to take into a shot. And so something as simple as even though we really want to work on that 15 footer, say free throws for us to be able to tweak up and say, Hey, we're going to go two feet in front and two feet behind while we're emphasizing this, you know, 15 foot free throw distance, there's variability there. Right. Uh, another one would be the shot type. So if I start at the block, and I cut out to the corner and I shoot a catch and shoot three. I lift up to the wing, catch and shoot three. I drift back to the corner, catch and shoot three. And then I sprint to the other corner and do the same thing. Corner three, wing three, corner three, sprint to the other side. As variable, variable practice, each type of shot is going to involve slightly different footwork and movements. And those are some things we want to practice. That'd be an example of variable practice right there. Randomized is a drill that you practiced in random order. We've been doing a lot of these with ball handling lately. So we'll have um, a player like coaching an, another player through. So they're both dribbling the ball, but only one player knows what's going to happen. So if I'm dribbling the ball and say, we're going pound, pound, cross, and I'll say cross, okay? And, and the person across from me, they have to mimic what I'm doing. And I say, hey, between right now I'm going between legs and they're trying to copycat me or mirror me. I say behind the back. Now they're going behind the back. So the kids are working on their moves, but one is directing and communicating, which is something that I like. The other player, it's random. They don't know what move is coming up next that they're going to have to practice. And they're also working on some listening skills. So that would be a simple variation of so, some random practice. Uh, you may throw the basketball out to a player and have them um, freestyle dribble, right? Because we, we work with a lot of guards. We work with a lot of players with the amount of space. We want people to be able to break somebody down off the dribble. So I say, hey, you're going to get the basketball. You're going to freestyle. But your partner's underneath the basket. 
And if they put their hand up, you're going to have to pass it to them. If they yell shot, you're going to have to shoot it. So they're looking at the partner for hands because that's cues pass. They're also using their ears shot that cues, boom, get up into your shot. Right. And so that there's some, that's randomization there, right? There's another person involved in the drill and they're working on some of those decisions, right? By using their eyes, using their ears. Those are really good. We've also done like some crazy fun ones that have been, I think, great for hand-eye coordination and also mimic the fact that in a game, you want to know time, score, all, all situations, uh, what offense are we running? What play are we running? Who, you know, who needs to get a touch and hasn't touched it in a while? Meanwhile, you're working on, you know, maybe you're bringing the basketball up against pressure. What's the defense doing? There's a lot of things going on, right? And so you may be working on your physical skills, but there's a lot of things on the peripheral that we need to, you know, take in and understand from a mental standpoint. And so some fun things that we've done to get kids really work in their mind as well as their body at the same time is like this Q and a, and we've done stationary. We've actually done like figure eight dribbles on the move, but we'll have another kid asking them random questions, random questions, right? Meaning uh, we'll have a player dribbling around in a, a figure eight, like say I'll set two cones and maybe they're, you know, eight feet apart. I say, hey, you're going to dribble around these cones but you're going to look at your partner and your partner is going to ask you questions. What's the date? When's your birthday? Um, how many letters are in the word coach? Random stuff, right? It's so funny. Math problems. I mean, kids giving each other math problems. You know, some were like seven plus seven and some were much more complex. This is pretty new for me as far as trying some of these things out. But I've noticed a few things and I've done some of these myself with, with my players. Like I've been the, not just the coach, I've been the, the player doing it. I've noticed some interesting things. I've noticed that not just my, my body's getting warmed up and for example, my footwork and my hands and my ball handling skills, I feel like they're improving, but I feel like my mind is kind of opening up, Right. Because these are things where I'm not just repeating the same thing again and again and again. Uh, I'm not just going for speed. Like how many times can I pound, pound, cross in, in 20 seconds? These are good. And we still do these things. And a lot of times we'll use them for like testing to, to measure improvement. Um, but to be able to just activate the mind a little bit more and to get you to perform uh, different basketball skills and movements while being able to essentially have your mind on other things. In this case, even answer questions has been something that a, our players have loved. We've done this at clinics. We've done this at small group workouts. Our players have loved it. And speaking personally, I have noticed that when I finish these, cause we do these quick, like this is hey, here's a couple of variations we're going to work on today. We'll do it for five minutes in our warm up, and then we're done. Right. So this isn't like a workout doing this stuff. But I've noticed after I've done it, not only is my body feel like it's warmed up, but I feel like my mind is open. Um, I would like a scientist to explain a little bit more of kind of what's what's going on as far as some of the, you know, the neurological aspects of of this, the mental aspects of this. But every time that I've done it, I've just felt more open, right? Like my brain, the best way to put it is I feel like my brain was turned on. You know, we do a lot of things to warm up the body, but do we also do things to warm up the mind? And so this has definitely helped. How does this come back to in-season player development? I apologize. This is something we've just been kind of working on. And so it, it comes to mind, but it's random. The point is it's random. And so you could do some of these at the beginning of a workout. You want to change it up in season. Uh, it could be early and have some fun. It could be, you know, January and it's cold and players are tired to be in there. I would definitely recommend doing some of these little drills that I've, I've mentioned. So anyway, that was a random drill. Big time tangent there, but I think it was worth it. And then you got your game-based drills. 
very specific to what's going to go on in the game. Here's the situation. Just think about in a game, we got to read. Then we have to make that decision. We have to act upon it. And then that is going to create a new situation. Then we need to read that situation. We need to decide what we're going to do. Then we need to act upon it. And that's just constantly like those three things. There's a situation. We need to read. We need to decide. We need to act. That's four things. And then we repeat. And it's just that's the constantly what's happening throughout the course of a basketball game. And so, of course, we want to make sure that we're doing a lot of game-based drills because that's reflected in the games. To come back to in-season player development, it's very important that we do these on an individual and small group setting so our players can get more repetitions in and continue to improve themselves throughout the course of the season. Because if you got 12, 15 players on a team and you're just playing five on five for a, a ton of the practice, and then you're going over scouting report, you're um, going over your own offense, some of your defense work, a lot of practice can go by and you're not really getting many repetitions in. And so if we can put that, you know, high octane that by getting into some smaller groups and work on some of these game-based drills, yeah, that's really going to complement and build up our in-season player development. As long as we're <clears throat> going back into some of the things I mentioned at the beginning, the drills that we're working on, closeouts or transition or rebounding, do those drills that we're doing reflect how we want to play in the game? Right, our pillars of play. As long as those things complement one one another, uh, we're going to be better for it throughout the course of the season. So, this is something that I have a full presentation on in CoachesEdge.coach. It's a presentation I'll be giving this weekend on Sunday in Charlevoix, Michigan, to you know however many coaches are there, and it's something that I just wanted to share with you because I think it has a lot of value. And I have no, I have no doubt that if you take some of the things in, in this little presentation, little podcast and apply it to your team, they will be better hands down 100%. They will continue to be better throughout the course of the season. And not only that, but I think they're going to enjoy that process of playing basketball and having fun even more. So thank you for listening to the coach's edge podcast. I uh, really appreciate you. If you're curious about, our upcoming meetings with coachesedge.coach. Anybody is invited, whether that's our topic upcoming uh, on winning on October 22nd, our one on the 25th about three on three, our one on the 30th about leadership. Please hit me up. I will send you the Zoom link. These are going to be some awesome presentations that are open to the public on Zoom as we have different panelists with a high level of success from Brian Morehouse, national champion at Hope College. Doreen Engel, state champion out of St. Ignace, Jeremy Schiller, IMG Academy, um, Jeff Mezzatesta, Carver's Bay, boys basketball down in South Carolina. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, we, have, we have some awesome, awesome guests sharing their time and their knowledge with us, which is, is going to be tremendous. So please hit me up if you want to jump into those meetings uh, towards the end of October. Thanks for listening. Get after today.